One of the most important industries that sparked the economy was the automobile, which employed the new internal combustion engine and which transformed American life. In this topic, we'll look at the development of the automobile and the oil industry that it was based on. The concept of the internal combustion engine, which literally means burning fuel inside a cylinder, is simpler than the fire, boiler, and cylinder design of the steam engine, but was still difficult to develop. It involved the compression of gas before ignition to amplify the energy potential, the intake of air, the ignition, and finally, the exhaust. While the first internal combustion engine was designed in Germany in 1876 and used mixed gas, not gasoline, people quickly recognized petroleum oil as a possible source of combustible material in a cylinder. Some of the people involved in perfecting this engine, you might recognize their names because they had cars named for them. Gottlieb Daimler, Carl Benz, and Rudolf Diesel, among the most famous. Daimler uh, applied his gasoline engine to a bicycle in 1886, then to a four-wheeled carriage later that same year. While many automakers still uh, toyed with steam-powered cars or electric battery cars, new models of gasoline-run uh, engines dominated by 1900. Here we see D Daimler's uh, motorized carriage with the internal combustion engine. In 1898, there were still no more than 300 cars in the entire country, but by 1900, there were 8,000. Both Ransom Olds, obviously uh, gave his name to the car Oldsmobile, and the famous Henry Ford set up production in Detroit. It was close to the steel factories, petroleum reserves, and the lake transportation routes. Soon, the rest of the auto automobile trade, including the rubber industry, moved to the area as well. Detroit became known as Motor City. Incidentally, later on during the uh, 1960s, Motor City, uh, Detroit, was where the term uh, Motown music came from. Henry Ford, of course, uh, perfected the assembly line production of autos and was able to produce a lot of cars, driving the price down and thus making them affordable for the average American. Working with machine shop owners John and Horace Dodge, obviously they gave their name to the Dodge automobile, Ford incorporated the Ford Motor Company in 1903 with $28,000 in capital. Only a few years later, in 1908, Ford unveiled his famous Model T car, employing moving assembly belts into his plants, which allowed for even a greater increase in production and thus, once again, drawing the price down. At first, the Model T uh, in 1908 went, went for about 800 bucks, but before long, it was uh, cheaper than $300. All Model Ts were standard form, all black, and for the first time, with the steering wheel on the left side, which other automobiles soon uh, copied. By uh, World War I, about half the cars in the U.S. were Model Ts. A total of almost 15 million Model Ts were constructed. The automobile industry contributed to an explosion in the oil business. Now, since early human history, oil from surface pools had been used in small amounts to coat walls and to seal boat hulls, and even as a fire weapon in defense of uh, warfare. American pioneers used it medicinally, learning to practice from Indians. The first real use for petroleum was just before the Civil War, when whale oil, beeswax, and tallow candles, which had been used to make candles and lights, became scarce for the growing population, and oil was refined into kerosene for kerosene lights. Uh, kerosene had been made before, by the way, uh, just from coal. In 1859, an oil pioneer, Edward Drake, drilled the first of many oil wells in Titusville, Pennsylvania, in, in western Pennsylvania. People thought it was foolish, and they called it Drake's Folly. As Drake began to refine the oil into kerosene for lamps, he thought he could use several of the byproducts left over. First, gasoline, which was a clear fluid, and uh, a residue of the black, terry substance called asphalt. In time, of course, gasoline would become its own source of fuel for the internal combustion engine, uh, and asphalt was added to uh, macadamized roads, the roads that had gravel in them, 
to sort of co coalesce it into a, a smoother and firm uh, construction. At the time, however, most oil was refined into kerosene or as a lubricant for the many machines in the factories. Of course, machines uh, created a heat and friction like an automobile does today. In any event, Titusville, Pennsylvania became the uh, one of the first of America's, you know, raucous, hard drinking, and, and often short lived uh, boom towns linked to oil. Similar boom towns were springing up in uh, places like Texas and Oklahoma. The Oklahoma discoveries uh, helped uh, promote Oklahoma statehood. I should add that uh, the drilling also in uncovered tremendous amounts of natural gas, most of which was simply wasted by releasing it into the atmosphere or burning it off. It really wasn't until later that in the 20th century when people realized that natural grass, gas was a great source of energy itself. As the oil industry took off by 1900, more than a million gallons of kerosene were refined for lighting, 300 million gallons for fuel in factories and homes, and 170 million gallons by industry is lubricating oil. Soon after this, gasoline took off for cars, and by 1910, there are more than 450,000 cars on the road, all burning gasoline. One of the major captains of the oil industry was John D. Rockefeller. In 1870, Rockefeller formed the Standard Oil Company. Rockefeller, like Carnegie, soon mastered the art of buying up smaller rivals and improving their efficiency thereby allowing him to charge less and, you know, undercut his competition. Rockefeller was famous for uh, cutting costs and uh, pressuring for discounts on oil shipments and, and offering di differential prices to get his way. While the larger Standard Oil was able to cut prices of oil to the public, it undercut rivals and soon dominated the oil market, both horizontally and vertically. Rockefeller would form corporations in different states, but then have that corporation controlled by Standard Oil's corporation. This innovative way to bypass regulations was the first so-called trust of corporations of corporations. Standard Oil Corporation would also buy up its rival corporations and that would add to the trust. It solidified Standard Oil's dominance. By the 1890s, Standard Oil dominated over 90% of the nation's oil industry, an industry growing in importance to the nation's economy. In this cartoon, you can see Standard Oil depicted as an octopus, just sort of grabbing everything in its way. It should be added in closing that experiments were being made in another oil-related industry, air travel. Ohio brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, were the first to make a sustained flight of a heavier-than-air flying machine. A number of inventors are rushing to accomplish this, working on gliders and so forth, uh, but at the time the Wright brothers were the first to secede. On December 17, 1903, on the sand dunes of Kill Devil Hills or Kitty Hawk on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, Orville Wright and uh, Wilbur flew several successful runs covering between 120 and 200 feet in about 15 seconds at an altitude of about 10 to 12 feet. Five people witnessed the first flight and a famous photograph was taken, but the brothers, they, they sort of struggled to convince the world that their flight was legitimate. And then, of course, it was, and the Industrial Revolution had, therefore, spawned the first air travel. It would uh, still be, however, almost a decade before flight caught on, and that was with World War I. In any event, this includes the section on the automobile and, and the oil industry.